G'day, I'm Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab. And today in the lab, I've got Brett Robinson here, the National Sales Manager for Longshi. G'day, Brett. Good afternoon. <laughs> well, look, I'm really excited to have you in here because I've had the Longshi modules out here at the lab on a small solar tr tracking system for like four years now. And mm. they're awesome. They really are. They're, they're the 435 waters. And gee, those bifacials are amazing. Well, they were the start of the real modern story of, mm. of Longi. We've been going since 2000. Mm -hmm. Those particular ones that you've got out there are our 166 millimeter cell. So that was the one that uh, brought bifacial to the marketplace, to the world, quite frankly. And they have been such an advancement an absolute advancement to the to the market. And I know from our discussions earlier today, you note that uh, under all conditions, they give you more power than a standard product. Yeah, like on average, about 8% more than the identical panels for the 435 monofacial. So it's a really good test. Same tracker, two types of panels in the same sun, 8% more production. Wow. Yeah. It's a free kick. I, I mean, to get 1% more production out of a solar panel is a big deal. <laughs> it, is. it is. It truly is. And uh, so, yeah, so that uh, led us on to uh, the 182 millimeter cell, which was the uh, uh, the last product come through, which is the 415. Now we're on to the HPBC, the HIMO X6. Wow. Which is what we're here to talk about today. So this is the HIMO X6 here? It is. That's our small sample in front of us. And of course, the, the large one at the back here. Right. So what does HPBC stand for? Well, it's a hybrid pacified back contact cell. Right. Right. Now, okay, so what does that mean? It means that all the electrical architecture, instead of being on the front of the cell, is at the back of the cell. Oh, that's why this is missing a grid. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. There's, uh, it's, uh, it is noted that there is something missing. And I suppose that's the advancement. Our R&D team at Longi, which is, by the way, we have over 4,000 engineers in our R&D section. They have created the platform to be able to get better efficiency from a cell without going away from the product that we have known and used now for 23 years, which is the P-type wafer. So just by taking off the front grid, which like, I mean, there's an old panel behind us there and it's just, it's all grid. Surely, um, I guess the, the self-shading is the big, big win. Absolutely. And so when uh, companies like us do international testing mm. and they test for uh, cell efficiency and module efficiency. They literally place the light above the unit and take the photo and take their calculations. But with the back contact product, there is no bus bars to shade. And in particular, at 10 o'clock in the morning and two o'clock in the afternoon where you've got glancing light, there's nothing, there's no further, um, no further shading from the bus bars either. So across the day, this product continues to develop as much power as it possibly can. That's a really good point, because th I just thought of them as a grid, but actually they're a three-dimensional structure. They are. And they cast a little tiny shadow, and it gets longer at either end of the day. We, um, yeah. we People spend lots of money to get the panel on the correct angle, wh yep. whichever one that is applicable to your part of Australia. But this product will pick up the light wherever it's coming from, and that's the, that's the spectacular part about it. Yeah. Now, I mean, Longi weren't the first to come up with back contacts, but I remember they used to be really expensive. And they still are, apparently. Mm -hmm. As I said, uh, R&D people have been working very hard to bring a new type of platform in which to go further. So at the moment, we simply call it HPBC. This is also available in our bifacial utility product, which is our HPDC, which is dual side. And it will allow us to update into the future to go to HJT technology Ooh, as, as it goes on. Sorry about the acronyms. Oh, really warning everyone, there's quite a lot of acronyms in this uh, business. So HJT, what's that? That's uh, Hetero Junction Thin Film. Right, so it's got more than one production layer. So hence the hetero. Well, that's right. But where we're going to is, uh, is going towards that theoretical maximum of efficiency that you can get out of a solar, uh, out of a silicon cell. So we think with as it currently stands, we think this can get to just over 29.1% efficiency, oh, so which is which is really getting out there. But it comes back to the architecture. Yeah. We've spent the money to get the architecture right, and we're not tied to a, a particular, you know, N-type Topcon or, or some other module uh, way to go about doing things. The bottom line is that our business is looking towards the future, and we want to make it to be able to be a mass market available product. So it has to be at a mass market price. So 
They're not. These are elite panels, but they're not an elite price. Correct. They are an elite. They are an elite product. Mm. We're a mass market business. Mm. Uh, Longi doesn't do things in in small ways. We are committed. Uh, our owners are committed to making sure that we bring solar out to the masses to um, improve the planet and to um, and to reduce um, our footprint. So there's quite a lot of technologies out there. You know, we've got Perk and we've got Topcon and we've got HJT. Why did uh, Longji move to HPDBC? It has the best opportunity for us to continue a low cost, high efficiency method of um, cell manufacture in which to manufacture modules. So one of the things that customers ask for is reliability and efficiency. But the reliability side comes because we have uh, identified some of the ways that um, problems occur with modules over the years. And that's generally to micro cracks, micro cracks where the, um, where the solder comes together. So of course, with the back contact, our solders are all in a straight line. So under a, a, a top con or a perk, it, it comes off the top of the cell, goes down, and the negative goes underneath. With ours, they're straight lines. So there's no more issue about that Z section of the yeah, cell micro cracking mm -hmm. or, or actually breaking the end of the cell. The wafers are now uh, on some of our opposition are so thin. They're down at 120 and 110 microns thick. Um, our, our P wafer sits at 150 microns, so it's a little bit so, so it's like an thicker. eighth of a millimetre. It's pretty thin. It's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. It's a really good point, though, you made about efficiency because, I mean, back in the day when I used to sell and install solar, customers would often ask for the most efficient panel. But when I gave them the price, they went, nah, nah, nah. But now you can say, well, you can have your cake and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> we um, we uh, we do we do believe that uh, at the end of the day the customer requires mm. uh, the best that they possibly can buy at the time given their budget circumstances. Mm. Nothing's changed. Mm. Everyone still has to work to a budget. So the result of our R and D means that the efficiency that was literally twelve months ago double the price mm. is now. Uh, half the price. I mean, there's two types of efficiencies you can think about. There's the efficiency of converting sunlight to electricity, and there's the efficiency of making money from that. And you achieve both with the same product rather than having a really expensive product that you know might have the same sort of efficiency, but it's not so cost efficient. If you um, are able to mass, mass manufacture mm. a product and give it a an affordable price, mm. more people will be able to take advantage of it. Mm. And that's solar. That's the solar story for the last 30 years. Every year, the price has come down. Every year, the efficiency has gone up and more and more people around the world have been able to afford it. And making your own solar, making your own electricity at home is now commonplace. Once upon a time, you had to explain it to people. Now you don't. Everyone knows it. Everyone's got it. <laughs> And we try and get across to those people that don't have it that it's in their best interest. It supports their lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. So um, what are some of the benefits of um, HPBC? Well, the first, the first benefit for customer is that it looks great. Mm -hmm. And so it works well with the, the standard type color, color bond roofs that are there. They, they want a, a rather flat, black looking section on their roofs. The second thing is it's very reliable. The reliability side comes from, first of all, being a, a single sided uh, glass product. So we test um, our 3.2 millimeter glass products. We test them for 25 millimeter hail, 35 millimeter hail, 45 millimeter hailstones. Oh, that's monstrous. Absolutely. And so we go beyond international testing because to get Because 25 to that. mils is your standard test. It is. Wow, 45 at, mils, that's at Atherton Tableland sort of hail. <laughs> well, I, I'm from Brisbane, so that, yeah. that's, a, that's yeah. a yearly occurrence in my way. So uh, so, so we the, the 3.2 millimeter glass works very well there. Double-sided yeah. glass, it's 1.6 mil, yeah, not all that great. The other thing about it is, is that because it uses a P-type wafer, you don't get the problems or potential problems of, of damp heat. Now, that's really, really an issue in, in my part of the world in Queensland, but it's also an issue down here in Victoria. So if you get moisture, humidity, moisture past the, the back sheet in a, um, with an N-type product, it can chemically and electrically um, 
interfere with the the, um, uh, the solder in the uh, in the cell, and it reduces the output of the panel. It's a very significant issue for those that are using an N-type product. Mm. Now, you mentioned um, the the, the colour. Do they come with a black back sheet as well? Absolutely. Uh, so we have the uh, the, the black all version, the all black version, I should say, as well as our starry, starry night version, which, which is the I one love we call the name, it the, uh, the starry night. It's a beauty. <laughs> uh, so, um, so the all black version is for those that really want that that true all black finish. And so, some people would have seen in our socials in recent times a, a comparison on, on literally a duplex roof in Sydney, mm. and one has got an all black product from another company, and it's night and day difference. And I believe you recently put some on your own roof. I did. So uh, so I put the, the Starry Night version on my roof and uh, uh, the installers that did it for me uh, have done it on a number of places and they are absolutely ecstatic about the output of the product. Once again, it's about fattening out that morning and afternoon with uh, with the glancing light. So it's particularly relevant when you're in the southern parts of Australia where you do get more glancing light across the year. Um, it's really important to, to be able to, to grab as much as you can sunlight as uh, to create your own electricity. And mm. this works exceptionally well under those conditions. Now this sample unit we've got in front of us, uh, you said that the 182 mil uh, crystals, but they're all cells originally, but they're cut in half. Uh, so the one behind us, this is your your half cut variety. Yes, it is. Um, does it have the same um, shade tolerance that you would expect with like six sub modules with inside the same unit? Correct. So all of the the, the way of the the product is is uh, uh, performs. Yep. Uh, and the parameters in which it does for for shading and others are yep. exactly the same. So anyone that's used our product in the last five or six years would be completely familiar with the output uh, reliability uh, as well as the product reliability. So the the product, as you can see, it's uh, it's it's a great size. It's seventeen twenty two millimeters high by eleven thirty four millimeters wide. Weighs only 20.8 kilos. So it's the lightest product on the market. Wow, that's nice. And it's got the highest efficiency. Now, off camera, we were talking deep tech. We were talking about temperature coefficients. And we we're talking about the, how it changes, uh, you know, with temperature, your, your power, but also your voltage. You've got some very nice numbers there. It, they are part and parcel of the reason why Longi has gone that way. is because mm. it gives practical, practical benefits, not just... IEC testing. Mm. So, uh, in terms of in part where I come from in Queensland, um, it's the uh, amount of um, uh, reduction in output per degree Celsius over the standard test. So it's only 0.29 of a percent uh, to uh, per degree Celsius. So it's a really low coefficient. Yeah. So, in other words, the hotter it gets, you get more power out of this product than you do in equivalent products from other manufacturers. The other thing is the VOC. So the VOC performance level is really, really low. So that means when you've got a really low cell temperature, such as if you're in New Zealand or many parts of Victoria or in Tasmania, it actually really starts to uh, make super efficient energy from the from the sunlight that it can grab. So yes. it's, it's, it's given us two parts of the puzzle, which means that under all Australian conditions, you get a super output. Because when you compare panels, often you're just saying watts. This is a 440 watt panel from company A, 440 watt panel from company B. But when you look at the temperature coefficients, it's how they really work. It's the toughest thing to put across without mm. without someone glazing over. And yeah. trust me on this one, I, I've glazed over a lot to, <laughs> to, to understand it. But it, it, it is such a such a, um, a a level where everyone thinks they're buying the same thing, mm. and they're not. Mm. And that's the the most critical part. Many people buy a, a product because it says it's got 440 watts or mm. 370 watts, and quite frankly, with a number of manufacturers, you really don't get what you pay for. I'm going to give a little tech tip to all those solar designers out there. If you're designing a solar system using our um, PV standard 5033, any version, they always refer to this table 4.1, which gives temperature co sort of rate de uh, increases for voltage based on temperature range. Don't use it because you're allowed to use the actual manufacturer's numbers. And, the, and in this case, they're so much better. If you use table 4.1, they're going to ask you to use 0.45% per degree Celsius for mm. VOC. Yes. Whereas you're a 0.2, 
something. Point two something. Two, point, point two, two something. Point two something. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll put it the right number, but it's very, very small. It's like, Literally, it's half as much as the table in the standard, which means you probably can put another panel in the string if you use the actual uh, formula that you're allowed to in the standard. Don't just don't use table 4.1. It's no. so out of date, guys. Yeah. Anyway, that's my rant over. <laughs> So, Brett, um, like I said, I'm really excited to see these panels here because I just love the Longshies. They actually run my lab, by the way. In fact, they we've got, uh, I think, seven electric cars here and they wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those panels. So they keep us uh, on the road and happy and smiling and not generating uh, any fossil fuel uh, uh, consumption. We've <laughs> uh, we've contributed to a, a lot of um, uh, businesses across Australia, so whether it's for Glenn's from time to time or, or others. And at the end of the day, um, why we like to support people is because they're out there trying to actually educate. Education is the single biggest thing about solar. Once upon a time, they were a bit like that at the back there, and it was for uh, it was not for the um, the average consumer. But now we live in an age where the consumer just believes everything is the same, and they believe everything is going to give them a hundred percent. Well, it it just doesn't happen. Mm. So it is one of those times when we have a, a new technology which comes out, which literally goes beyond everything else that's on the marketplace, and it's at a mass market price. It's the thing that is runs our business. Our business is designed all around mass market production of the highest possible quality. You know, as, as you know, I've got a little display wall out there of um, solar panel technologies yep. and going back uh, sort of, you know, 15 years or so, and I think I've got to add one more to it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, this is uh, this is the first of a series of products out by Longia over the next five to 10 years. Yeah. This will underpin the, um, the, the, the ongoing development of our product. This technology will also be picked up by other manufacturers. Mm. Um, uh, at the moment, it's uh, and Topcon is the is the uh, is the mantle of the of the best seller in Australia. Uh, within the next two years, there'll be uh, a half a dozen other manufacturers that have come to the HPBC side simply because it allows them to continue to provide better efficiency levels. And soon, instead of being a four forty watt for that format, it'll be five hundred. You know, back contact is almost like cheating. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Just take that grid off. <laughs> that's it. Take the grid off. Yeah. Free up the surface. No, no shade. shading. Bob's your uncle. Thanks, Brett. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>